to Accelerate OC, the only show focused on the people leading innovation in Orange County. Join our host, Carrie Ransom, in his conversations with the trendsetters, entrepreneurs, investors, and leaders here, because it's time to Accelerate OC. Good morning. Welcome to Accelerate OC. I'm Carrie Ransom, and thanks always to my engineer, Paul, for making me and my guests sound so good. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by my friend, Jeff Martin. Jeff is from Collective Genius, and uh, I have uh, a great guest today, Lori Seal, and I know she is a big fan of doing leadership offsite meetings with her team. And Jeff is someone who will facilitate those meetings when you want an outside facilitator. And he has a program called Peak Planning, where he will work with the CEO or the leadership team and really help produce a plan. And often uh, just going off and meeting isn't enough. You need to actually come back with an action plan that's going to focus and align everybody. And Jeff has a really good process that he works with a lot of venture back companies and a lot of venture firms to help them implement. So if you are interested in that, it's the fourth quarter. We're gearing up for 2020. Uh, hit me up and I'm happy to introduce you to Jeff. So as I said, I am super excited to have my good friend Lori Seal here today. And before we get to talk about her story, her incredible leadership philosophies, because I really look up to uh, her for how she approaches the world and shows up every day. Uh, and I also want to talk to her about her current role as CEO of Blythe Co. Um, but first, let me tell you a little bit about my friend. So as I said, she's the CEO of a, a longtime company here called Blythe Co. And they are one of the leading resellers of software, uh, also called VARS, as many of you may be familiar with, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But she took over from Steve Blythe at the beginning of this year after he had been the CEO of the company he founded for almost 40 years. And he handpicked Lori to take that role and, and take the company over from him. And so prior to that, she had been at the company for over five years as the COO. Um, but we're going to talk a lot about how that came to pass. Um, she was also a longtime executive here at a company that was a prominent software company, was, still is here, but not as prominent, uh, called Sage Software, or now Sage. Uh, and so she's been in the software industry for a long time. And I think uh, as technology continues to evolve, we're not always as thoughtful about the people who have been around the industry for a long time and really been at the table seeing the change happening. And so... Um, we'll talk a little bit about that change as well today. And in between Sage and Blytheco, Lori really had her entrepreneur uh, or entrepreneurial experience for about a year and a half period where she was leading an e-commerce SaaS and services provider. And we spent a lot of time talking and had many good conversations during that period. And uh, I think she learned a lot and, and we'll probably touch on some of that today as well. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, Lori has amazing leadership philosophies. I find her to be one of the most grounded and enlightened leaders that I've ever met. Um, she's such a caring person. She cares so deeply about people. She has such gratitude that she brings with her everywhere she goes. And I just always feel like she's so committed to helping each person that she meets and touches find their best and, and reach their highest potential. And really, you know, helping them kind of become the hero of their own story. And I so am grateful for, for our friendship and for you coming today. Lori, it's great to have you. Oh, thank you so much, Carrie. It's just, uh, gosh, I am just overwhelmed by gratitude of just the years that I've known you. I think it's been maybe nine or 10 years that we first met when I was at Sage and you've been such an important person on my journey. So it's just a delight to be here with you today. Well, it's, it's, I'm so appreciative. So let's get to the starting line. Um, you're currently running Blytheco, as I said. So tell the audience a little bit about Blytheco. Give us a, an introduction, even though it's been around for quite a while, and, and how you got involved in the company. 
perfect. Yeah. So, so Blythka is a national firm. We're in about 23 states, I believe. So we're very much a virtual organization, which brings its own blessings and challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we help companies select software to run their, their businesses, things from uh, financial management, manufacturing, distribution, e-commerce, marketing automation, really targeting businesses that are maybe anywhere from 10 million a year in revenue up to half a billion or greater. So really serving that mid-market company size. And we've implemented over 5,000 implementations in our 40-year wow. history. So wow. we've seen a yeah. lot. We've seen a lot of change. Um, but we have just a really committed team, uh, really passionate about driving transformation in the companies and clients we serve and just helping them achieve their missions through technology and awesome business processes. Very cool. So talk about how you got involved in the company. Yeah. So, wow. You know, it's interesting when you take a retrospective on your life mm -hmm. and you think, oh my gosh, it makes perfect sense sure. that I'm here. Um, but looking forward, I, I can honestly say I never envisioned that I would be a company owner. Mm -hmm. I never envisioned that I would be at Blythe Co. I first met Steve Blythe when I was probably in my early 30s, still very bright and shiny and new, growing my career at Sage. And he happened to come in on the last day of the fiscal year, um, helping you know drive orders. And, and he was mm -hmm. you know just a key partner for Sage. And we both remember our first meeting very well. And, and just how ironic it is that our relationship had had um, come to the point where you know he's he's now a mentor. He's on my board. Um, but yeah, that, that's, uh, that's a bit about my first introduction with him. And then, wow, I think I left Sage in 2011 and ran the, uh, the e-commerce incubated mm -hmm. startup. Mm -hmm. And at about that time, about a year and a half in, um, I reacquainted with Steven at a charity event mm. that, his, that Blythe Co. was putting on. And we had this great conversation. And, you know, he's doing a lot of, and he still does a lot of, uh, you know, charity work, you know, flying doctors down. He's a pilot flying doctors down into Mexico and mm. nurses and medical supplies and running clinics. And I just really connected on the whole legacy aspect of uh, where he was shifting into in his mm. life. And so, you know, ended up, we, we decided, hey, let's continue this conversation over lunch. And that's when he broached uh, a real need that he was having to bring in a COO and to really take um, that leadership role to the next level. That's, that's a great story. I think it really highlights the importance of building those authentic relationships and uh, maintaining them because sometimes you just don't know where opportunity might appear from. That's true. So let's go a little bit deeper. So you, you came in initially as the COO. What, what did you learn from that experience? I mean, you were coming into that also from really a CEO position uh, in your startup. So what did, what did you, you learn and, and from that, I guess? Yeah, you know, I think the most important thing was how to balance 39, well, I guess then it was 35, a very substantial, um, number of years of history, established mm -hmm. processes, and a culture of its own, and to come in and be really committed and passionate to my own values and ways of doing business. Mm -hmm. And there were, you know, a lot of times where I would go into Stephen's office, you know, kind of at the end of the day, and it was my therapy session. I'd say, you know, I'm really seeing these things I want to drive in the business. However, it's not how they're done today, and I want to be really respectful mm -hmm. to the legacy that you've built and created, and I need to be really authentic to who I am as a leader and as a person. And, you know, I think the early part of our relationship when I came in as COO was really more asking permission. Sure. And the beautiful thing about Stephen is, you know, being a, a real hardcore entrepreneur, building that thing from scratch. Mm -hmm is he has been my strongest encourager to ask for forgiveness. Mm. And I began to I make that that's shift. Rare. <laughs> it is rare. Yeah. So that's what, you know, that's what took place. And, and I began to trust my, my gut more. Mm -hmm. I began to follow my passions more. And he also invited me to have spirited um, conversations where we disagreed. Sure. So what, what was it him really telling you to start changing that that led to that shift or what 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 was the can you look back and say that was the moment I started to really shift you know I would say that when I came in I came in at a really challenging 
inflection point in the company's history. Uh, Stephen had grown organically probably for the first 10 years of the company mm -hmm. pretty significantly. And then a lot of the partners in the ecosystem began to consolidate. So he was part of a pretty mm -hmm. radical roll-up and consolidation effort. Mm -hmm. And so we had a number of partners. And those partners were all sort of autonomously running the regions, which is why we have such a national mm -hmm. footprint. Mm -hmm. And at the time where software was going through such a transformation, moving from on-premise models mm -hmm. to really you know, this awakening of the cloud, he was very much at the forefront of seeing those trends and wanting to embrace them and put Blytheco through its own transformation. And he didn't have the full support and strategic mm. alignment of the rest of the partners. And that started creating tremendous conflict in the organization. And it reached such a point that he actually bought all the partners out. So I started two weeks after the buyout was introduced. Wow. Okay. And I have to say, you know, because a lot of the, because Blytheco did not have an integrated and centralized culture, Mm -hmm. an operating model. It was like all these orphaned offices. It was like a sure. radical divorce. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember coming in, you know, it was just such an important time to reestablish the culture. And I reached out to one of my mentors and was just getting a lot of affirmation that that was the place I needed to start. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that that might have been where Stephen would have started. So I think we approached that um, season of the business maybe a little differently. Mm -hmm. And so those were some of our initial conversations sure. as we had some different ideas about sure. what work needed to be done first. Sure. Culture versus strategy, maybe? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that, uh, that's amazing. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. So you talked about the change. And, you know, I don't know that everybody who, you, you and I have both been around the software world for, for a while. Uh, and... I don't know that everybody fully appreciates the change and the change wasn't just happening in the software industry. The change is also happening, I would argue, in the, the customer mm -hmm. base. You know, it's, you talked about Sage being a really key provider software to the manufacturing industry and some of what, what we could look at as last generation or, or last revolution type of companies. And so how have you seen that, that change really manifest? in the types of customers and even the, the types of software or services that you're now offering? Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, my finding is that business technology is heavily influenced by consumer technology and mm -hmm. consumer trends. Mm -hmm. And as we all, you know, shifted from, you know, just flip phones to Blackberries mm -hmm. to, you know, iPhones and Androids, the appetite to interact with technology has really transformed, I think, the expectations of business users. Mm -hmm. So the old, you know, kind of DOS mainframe, character-based <laughs> ways of interacting with our software has shifted even in the business community. And there's this desire for holistic business processes, sure. for greater automation, workflows, collaboration, visibility, you know, real-time information, mm -hmm. you know, drill down. And and that's really, I think, informed and influenced uh, the innovations that we've seen in software. I'd say it's less about, you know, do you have a server in your closet or do you sure. log into the internet? But it's more around the appetite for the way I want to interact mm. um, with my business, my business software. And, you know, I got to give Sage credit too, right? They've, they've gone on their own journey to mm -hmm. transform and embrace the cloud as well. And, you know, have made some very strategic acquisitions and, and innovations themselves. And certainly we're seeing, you know, other, you know, up and comers or established cloud providers just having huge explosive growth and, mm -hmm. you know, radical, radical traction. But, um, you, you know, I'd say that's really what's, what's driving, driving the trend. Um, when we have companies come in and want to change software applications, the number one thing they're looking for is how can I get my job done better faster, more easily, mm -hmm. more elegantly, more in a more pleasing way. Mm -hmm. They just expect more and they don't want to be siloed as much. Sure. They want their, their the solution to not be piecemealed and this whole best of breed old way of doing mm -hmm. things. Here's my accounting package. Here's my CRM package. They want everything to be full business processes, sure. lead to cash, procure to pay. And so it's been really exciting, I think, for us to embrace helping companies more holistically just run better to accomplish their, you know, their, their mission and purpose. Well, that I would say that's very 
encouraging to me to hear because I've argued for a long time that the disconnected departments or systems unfortunately usually end up with bad customer experiences. Mm -hmm. We we as customers often get stuck in those gaps and the idea that they're starting to awaken to that and that better systems, better integrated are likely to improve that overall experience is probably good for all of us on the outside of these companies as well. Yeah, it, it's true. And I would just share that that's where we see the biggest gains is it's really the handoffs between mm -hmm. the processes that the automations happen. You know, before you go into software and you'd be like, I'm going to go, you know, generate a purchase order. You know, you go out and you do your discrete sure. job and that's very siloed and invisible to mm -hmm. anybody else. Mm -hmm. And now there's these entire work streams that have, you know, handoffs natively. So you walk in and say, oh, you know, my colleague just finished X. The baton's now passed to me. I see that in my dashboard or mm -hmm. my control tower. And I get visibility to the, the, the customer journey from where I sit inside the organization mm -hmm. to serve exactly what, you know, what you're, what you're saying. And so I, you know, I, I think that's just, it's just really awesome to see technology catching up to what has been often paper-based, you know, verbal, email, supplementing systems, yes. and now being native to the applications. Yeah, that's great. So as you look ahead, uh, I haven't asked a lot of my guests to, to prognosticate, but <laughs> I would love, love, this, this is an area near and dear to my heart. What, what are the key trends that you're really seeing coming down or ahead that, that you're paying a lot of attention to right now? Yeah. You know, artificial intelligence is something mm -hmm. we see quite a bit, you know, more predictive analytics, mm -hmm. um, you know, are really helpful to give companies more forward looking visibility. You know, I'm a, I'm an accountant by, by, uh, by my original profession and trade and schooling. And so, you know, we're really steeped in, in a retrospective mm -hmm. view of our business performance. Mm -hmm. Here's my financials, you know, looking backwards and what what we're seeing is really shifting more to forward views, mm. you know, being able to take actionable um, decision making while there's still time to make an impact mm -hmm. um, and to intercept something going wrong before it goes wrong, uh, even, you know, customer touch points. So those are the things that we're really seeing. And then I would say the interconnectivity, you know, the whole IoT and devices mm -hmm. connecting in, you know, more and more as applications open up, you know, getting that kind of seamless, you know, breaking down of more and more silos that weren't mm -hmm. as accessible you know, to us is, is uh, where we're excited seeing a lot of evolutions. Very cool. Thank you for sharing maybe some entrepreneurial ideas people can take away from that as well here and building some additional companies in Orange County. So, Lori, you, you're you an amazing leader. I've, I've seen you do some firsthand with, with teams and, and you're in, the, you know, you come into a company at the midst of change, you're, you're leading authentically through it. I don't know that a lot of people have had the experience of really being able to work with such a, a genuine leader as you. Can you share some of the things that you do with your team to just help um, make them feel part of the family and, and really benefit from your, uh, your, your leadership? Yeah, gosh, thanks. I'm very humbled by your comments, by the way. Thank you. Um, you know, the things that, that I think are most important is pay attention to the way a company makes people feel. Mm. One of my early leadership lessons was I had different leaders that were very prominent and impactful to me. Mm -hmm. And some of them led through love and some of them led through fear. Mm. And the leaders that led through fear, I mean, man, we, we worked hard and we were on our game and we, we worked, you know, we knew there were high standards for excellence and we went to please them. The leaders that led by love, you know, had the same demands for excellence, mm -hmm. had the same high standards and expectations, but there was this extra passion, this extra commitment, and the way that it just created a beautiful community mm -hmm. inside the company that lasted, you know, well beyond that leader's tenure. You know, we had an opportunity to throw a, a retirement party, not only for Stephen Blythe, our founder, but two members on my board who were both very positively impactful leaders to me. And we had people flying in from other countries. People haven't seen these leaders for 10 years who served under them, who came tears crying because of the way these leaders made them feel. Mm. 
And and that's such an important lesson. And I think, you know, you've got to backstop that with some really key building blocks or, or elements. One is you have to have a passion, a North Star, you know, Simon Sinek's why. Mm-hmm. You have to start with why. And it has to be simple. It has to be real. And it has to be ingrained in the hearts of every single team member. Mm. So our, our passion is transforming companies. We open every important meeting with what's our passion, transforming companies. It's in our auto signature and it's real and living, breathing. And we, we spot recognize people who would live our passion. Mm-hmm. Um, two, you know, we have to have a set of values and our values are enshrined. They're, they're protected. I know when I joined Blythe Co., you know, our, our values were something we had but they weren't living, breathing. They couldn't be recited. We overhauled those. They're in an acronym. We all know them. We mm-hmm. remember them. And we, we also go through them. They're, they're living and breathing in our organization. And we do our annual 360 performance assessments on our values. Mm-hmm. So our feedback is up, down, all around. Mm-hmm. So it's very real in that the value feedback is to help us be better. Mm-hmm. Um, And then we're really transparent. We practice tremendous transparencies with our financial results, with our strategy, with our key initiatives. We have our entire business down on two pages, Mm. um, and that's public for our organization. So I think, you know, having our team not only know why we do what we do, how we do what we do, and the ways we're going to get those things done transparently and then how we're doing accomplishing it, where mm-hmm. we're succeeding and also more importantly, where we're failing and where we need everybody's help mm-hmm. has rallied the organization to be a single body. That's amazing. So you've been at the helm now since the beginning of the year. This is now a, a core part of the company DNA. What, what, what have you seen as a result of this first, not even full year, yeah. but you know, what, what's happened with the business that, that you've seen? You know, the most amazing thing, and I'm, I'm just so, so grateful for it, is the way that there's so much care with all of our team members. You know, we go through some really intense projects at times, big go lives, high complexity, mm-hmm. you know, causes tremendous, you know, sacrifice and intensity. You know, we have a lot of strategic initiatives that are, you know, one of them alone would be aggressive for an organization our size to take on. And we have seven. And it just it, it, it just overwhelms me so positively to see our leadership team, our management team, our front lines take so much personal ownership and care in driving the ball forward. And, you know, there's always that adage, you know, like it's lonely at the top. It's not lonely at Blythe Co. Mm -hmm. There's just so much support, Um, you know, strong arms and strong hearts for what we do. And that's honestly the most humbling, um, just positive experience. And, And more and more I see it every day. And there are times I just set, step back and, and my partner, Phil Sim, you know, we'll just step back and look around and go, oh, my gosh, look at this team we have. And it's all about the people. It's all about the team and the ferocity with which they lean into the mission. That's, that's so cool. And I think particularly that you're in technology and a, an area where a lot of the narrative is about how inhuman you know people are are fearful about artificial intelligence they're fearful about technology stripping away our humanity and yet it, it's clearly alive and well in a company like Blythe Co and I think we both would agree that where technology in transforming companies are, are doing great things is actually unlocking our humanity to be even greater than than we've ever been. Yeah, I, I would support that. I mean, you know, whether it's, you know, the, the culture that can typically be present in technology businesses focused on growth and focused on all the financial currencies or whether you think about it from, you know, just an, an end user or a worker perspective, you know, am I being disintermediated in my job? Is mm-hmm. my job being, you know, automated? You know, I really, I really agree with you. I mean, I see that, first of all, regardless of your industry, there's no reason a company doesn't 
doesn't can't have a soul. Mm-hmm. There's no reason That's a company right. can't have a soul because we're a collection of people. That's right. And so we choose how we show up together through our intention. But secondarily, you know, we'll come into some of our maybe less sophisticated or smaller companies. And, you know, they've been on a legacy package for 15 years. And there's fear. Sure. There's fear, you know, with the frontline workers. There's fear with, you know, Madge and accounting. You know, am I going to lose my job? Mm-hmm. You know, and what I find is we aren't we aren't displacing people's jobs we're empowering them to serve the business at a higher level, to get out of menial work, to get out of non-value added tasks, maybe even to get home sooner with your family, to break down silos, to team and partner more with people in your own organization. Because as we break down silos and build business processes, we can help companies collaborate and partner better. And that's been the beautiful thing. You know, we've come back and like two years later to implementing new technology and the way their organizations transformed, the way they work together, the way they get their jobs done, the way they get to spend their time, that's one of the most gratifying, um, you know, positive payoffs yes. that, that we get at Blytheco. Yeah, that's, that's great. So, Lori, shifting just a little bit, um, this show, Accelerate OC, is really, you know, exactly started for folks like you. I mean, you're, you're an amazing leader leading a great company here in Orange County, and you're headquartered here. You have a national footprint. Uh, you're in a lot of other markets. How do you think about Orange County relative to other places where Blytheco is or where you're doing business and really where you see the, as a county of, of business people, where do you see us moving forward? Yeah, you know, I, I've given that a lot of thought. And, you know, I know I had an opportunity to partner quite a bit with you when I was doing the incubated startup. I mean, you were a huge asset, you know, to me personally and professionally. And you introduced me Really, that was my deepest foray into understanding the real Orange County community of innovation and and investors and and the whole startup culture. Um, and and I have to say, you know, one of the things I really love about the Orange County community is as I find that it's very progressive and forward looking. Mm-hmm. And yet I also find that it's a group of people that really want to create a positive legacy. Mm-hmm. You know, there are other, you know, uh, intensive, you know, VC, PE communities where, you know, take New York, even take the Bay Area at times where, you know, it's really, it's, it's a financial, um, it's a financial uh, uh, focus. Yes. And I find Orange County, it's about making an impact. It's about, uh, you know, uh, forwarding humanity to a positive place. It's about bringing great innovation to, you know, for the greater betterment. And of course, there's a there's a financial element to that. But I also find that as people in Orange County are out, even, you know, getting to the other side of those successful startups, having amazing exits, mm-hmm. building, you know, billion dollar um, companies, you see the way they give back. You see the foundations that are set up. You see the the um, infusion of, of dollars into just the most thriving nonprofit ecosystem that Orange County also has. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the way that business, education, uh, investment community, and nonprofit community and civic community align in Orange County through organizations like the work Russ Williams has done with Ethical Edge and Influencers for Good and and you know Octane and and you know the the work that you're doing, Carrie. I think it's really encouraging. I just think there's tremendous intentionality. Yes. Um, and awareness that's present in this community that I think really differentiates us. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I've been starting to talk to a lot of folks about this idea that I, I think we are the potential laboratory mm-hmm. for the future business community or or really a, a modern American community and that we have all of the pieces here. And it, it's great socioeconomic diversity and ethnic diversity and uh, just, you know, the, this mix of kind of urban and suburban and all kinds of old businesses and new cutting edge businesses and world renowned thinkers. And, and it's just, it's all right here. And I think we, we need to just continue to, to I'm going to borrow your word, be intentional about experimenting and mm-hmm. pulling people together um, for much bigger purpose than just 
starting companies to make a profit. And I think, you know, I feel really encouraged by the recent uh, public uh, announcement from the Business Roundtable saying there is a, a greater purpose for business beyond just shareholders and, or single stakeholder. And, and I think that's giving the opportunity now for um, a new group of folks. And I think some of it's coming from our younger generations to step forward and lead and say, it, this is different. And, you know, coming from the multi-generational family business that I grew up in, I saw that there was a greater purpose, that, that you could be a, a key servant leader, contributor to a community and still build a good business that everybody benefited from. And I think that's where Orange County can really start to take the lead of what the next generation of, of companies, and, and it's going to take leaders like you to help pull us there. But um, I think that's the opportunity we have. Yeah, I think the word is integration. Yes. You know, I, I think we think of business as business. We think of students as students. You know, we think yes. of nonprofits as nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in, gosh, it was May of last year, you know, I, I received this vision, you know, of, of how a company like Blytheco can begin to reach into high school programs like STEM, you know, yes. science, math, technology, and create real mentorships on, mm -hmm. a, on a human level, on a personal level, as well as a, as a professional level, and really, you know, get, you know, more than just the college graduates interns, but really become mentors to particularly, you know, kids and students that don't have the same opportunities. You know, Orange County has, I think it's like 40,000 homeless kids in mm. high school. It's shocking statistics yes. in an affluent community like ours. And, you know, it's it's one of, you know, the the visions and, and passions of Blythe Co. downstream is, is to really unlock a deep integration, partnering with organizations like KidWorks and Boys and Girls Club and, and really come in and help pull up as they're pushing out um, youth yes. and integrate them into a hope and a future and a vision and a passion. Um, so that's really exciting for me is how do we start to model business being deeply integrated in the community and create a radical win-win? Because, you know, the biggest challenge that companies have, whether you're in a manufacturer, a retail firm, or a technology company like Blytheco is, is talent. You That's know, right. it's like, what, 3.7% unemployment? Yes. We just can't get enough good people. Right. So and we're exporting people. Yeah. Yeah. People coming out of UC Irvine and Chapman and yep. others, they're they're leaving because they're enamored to go to a place like New York or San Francisco, mm -hmm. and, and we ha we're we're creating them here in the schools at the high schools yeah. and the the universities. And to your point, yes, we 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 have to integrate them better. I'm gonna I will use that <laughs> word liberally. Thank you for for sharing that. Yeah. So. I know we're going to have to wrap here in a minute. Unfortunately, Paul never lets me go as long as I would like. What can the community, you know, I've been so uh, pleased and grateful to the audience around Accelerate OC for wanting to get involved, for uh, wanting to help. So what can the audience do to help you and Blytheco? What, what do you need help with at this point? Yeah, you know, I, I think just more and more, um, I'd love to see it easier to connect in with MBA uh, students. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I've reached out to you on a number of occasions, but how do we just have more of those cross business, um, you know, student, thought leadership, tech, innovation? How do we create more of those integration points? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of siloed activities yes. that go on, but how do we create more of a, a cross forum, whether we have like our own mini kind of, you know, uh, workshop days or something to share or brainstorm, but I would love to see more of a, a, a confluence of those audiences you know, come together, maybe even to talk about initially, how do we create sure. more of a shared space, um, you know, to come together and to start that journey? Because it can be a little overwhelming and daunting, you know, when I think about how do I go out and start to, you know, integrate with, you know, some of the programs going on at UCI or Chapman. Mm -hmm. And it feels like, gosh, that's, it's a lot of heavy lifting. I don't know where to start. I got to make introductions. We're trading emails back and forth. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I've got a, you know, a very full time day yes. and night job, you know, yes. already. I think those would, would just make it more, you know, 
maybe make that more turnkey or more easy to have those conversations. Okay. Easier that's, to have those conversations. That's a good challenge. So I will, <laughs> uh, I'll put it to the audience and, and myself to, to give some more thought about what we can, what we can do to help there, but appreciate certainly your desire to better connect uh, across our amazing community. So last thing, and we're going to do our, our final lap here at Accelerate OC. I always want my guests, you've shared so much great wisdom and philosophy here today. What What's the biggest piece of advice that you would love to leave the audience with as you think about other technology leaders here in our community? What what advice would you, you know, people that are either in peer roles to yours or uh, aspiring to, to become future technology company leaders here? How, how would you like to influence them? Yeah, I, I, I would just say, you know, be bold. Um, I would, I would invite everybody to push past all your life limiting beliefs, hmm. you know, going through my own journey, you know, to becoming a business owner and a CEO, the biggest battles I really had was, was my subconscious sense of my own limitations and not giving myself permission to dream bigger mm. and not always believing in, in, you know, in myself and, and those around me to support me and, and just giving that maybe that, that freedom to fail. Um, yes. That has been, you know, transformative. And so that's something I encourage my team. And, and, you know, I would also say, this sounds really strange, but whenever you're trying to do anything that's hard, like like building a startup or launching new programs in the community, I would really just say self-care. And that mm. sounds so weird, but, you know, I know we can get so passionate on our business pursuits. Mm. You know, I'm going to build this startup. I'm going to sleep on the shop floor. I'm going to stay up all night with my spreadsheets. And part of showing up as a, as a, as a, a, an effective leader is to take the time to nourish ourselves, to have quality friendships, to be, be spiritually grounded, to, um, have our, our times to laugh and, and to be inspired to go to the mountaintop and, and, and cultivate our own vision for our companies and ourselves and our, our culture. So invest in that time away from the business, you know, having organizations like I've been in Vistage, which is mm -hmm. a wonderful peer coaching organization for seven years, um, you know, and be vulnerable, be willing to be vulnerable, be willing to tell the truth, you know, embrace your imposter syndrome. We all have it. Yes. Um, you know, those would be the, the, you know, the lessons that, that I certainly pass on when I have conversations and sharings with others. Mm. Amazing and great, great lessons in there. I uh, have every confidence this is going to be a highly appreciated and uh, successful episode of Accelerate OC. Thank you, Lori, so much. So I really, I, I can't thank you enough for, for coming today and for the friendship we have. And I could not be happier to see the great success that you are having at Blythe Co. And I'm not at all surprised, but I am still so happy for you and for, frankly, your team who gets to experience you every day. And that's something I certainly wish I uh, got more of. Uh, so thank you for coming in here. Um, thank you for being such a leader by example and servant leader in our community. You are absolutely doing your part to accelerate OC. I just want to close out, Carrie, by uh, I just want to acknowledge you. Um, you've always been a person who's never too busy to help anyone. You are one of the most giving, um, just smart. Uh, and and I, I think the thing I, I just love and recognize you for, and we were talking about this in the hall, is you have a currency that's so pure. It's genuine and pure. You literally want to serve uh, organizations, you want to help ideas uh, blossom and flourish. You want to help people achieve their dreams. And you, I, I just watch you do it sacrificially all the time with no thought to your personal gain. Um, you are a true servant of, uh, of business, of, of, of the, the spirit of innovation. And I'm really excited about your journey that you're on. Um, and I 
would love to give back just, you know, even 10% of what you've been able to give to me along my way. And by the way, you're, you have the best black book of anyone I know, you know, everyone. <laughs> so you're so connected because you just, you have such a great, a great infectious, uh, joyful, um, you know, personality. So thanks for being my friend. Thank you. Appreciate you. You've just listened to Accelerate OC. Join our live recordings every Tuesday morning at accelerateoc.com or listen, like, and share anytime from your favorite podcast spot. Let's Accelerate OC together. OC Talk Radio.